Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make two Express LRS receivers behave like one. So in this case, I've got two six-channel receivers, and I'm going to make that a single 12-channel Express LRS pulse width modulation receiver. Before I get started, I have two things I need to tell you. Number one, I have to give credit to Jeff for this idea because he's a patron on our Discord and he said on Discord, hey, can you do this? Is it possible? And I thought about it for a little while and I thought, yeah, you can. And I talked to the Edge TX developers and just verified that this is actually safe to do. And they said, yeah, absolutely. That's part of the reason we designed it that way. The second thing I need to tell you is this is a repost. I did a live video and I made a couple small little mistakes that I just wasn't satisfied with the video outcome as a result. And you can't really correct things in a live stream. So I decided to make a production video and I can walk you through exactly how this works and eliminate any errors that I might encounter along the way. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing I wanna do is show you what I've got here in terms of hardware. And what I'm working with here are two Maytech R24 P6 receivers, and I put them in a 3D printed enclosure. This STL is on my Discord, so if you like a copy of this STL, it's free, you can download it. You just have to get on my Discord to get it. And the idea is that these two receivers are combined using this 3D case into a single receiver. You can see we've got two different antennas going up, the antenna mast, and I've got them secured with a little zip tie and some heat shrink, and that's it. Now regarding binding, I've never tried to bind Express LRS without the binding phrases. So I understand there is a process to do that by powering them on and off quickly three times. In this example, I use the same binding phrase on all three devices. So that's the only one I've tested. You might wanna try it the other way without a binding phrase, but for me, I use binding phrases all the time. And in this case, I have the same binding phrase on the transmitter and both receivers. So that's the hardware set up, two Maytech R24 P6s in a single case. That's how we're gonna be using them. On the very left-hand side, notice that I've got two red pins in a row. This top pin is a VBAT pin, and the second pin is the standard voltage rail. And that's true on both receivers. So my intention is to power one of the receivers and then take a Y lead and connect it to the other receiver. And I'm gonna use this first row of pins over here on the left. If you wanna use VBAT, you can still do that. You simply use this pin for power off your battery and just connect the one red lead from your battery right onto that VBAT pin. And you only really need to do it on one of the two receivers. Don't do it on both because you don't get telemetry on the second receiver. I'll cover that in just a little bit. So your VBAT lead can go on this top pin right here. And then these two leads will carry power over to the second receiver on these two leads. Okay, so positive and negative. And here's what that looks like. Just take a servo extension and put it on that first row of pins and then run it over here to the second row and make sure you don't cross your wires up. You wanna make sure you keep your polarity correct. So ground on the bottom, hot in the middle and signal on the top. Again, if you wanna use VBAT, just take the white lead out and stick your battery lead in there and you're good to go. The other method of doing this is to use a Y and I'll explain why I like doing this one better. So I take that same extension and just plug it in on one end of the Y. This junction goes on the first receiver. We'll plug it in right here on the very first set of pins. And then the second lead, the extension, will go on the first set of pins on the second receiver. And the reason I kind of like this model better is because now I can take power from my power source and plug it into the remaining jack. But the idea is that if something goes wrong with this receiver, it doesn't necessarily eliminate power to this one. So if you use just the standard bridge and this receiver dies, this receiver goes with it. If you use a Y cable like this, you're actually putting the two in parallel in terms of power delivery and you can keep running just in case something goes wrong. So I'll plug this into power now and you'll see it go ahead and light up and, and we'll get a bind here on the radio in a moment. There we go, that's bound already. The next thing I'm gonna do is go through all 12 channels and show you that we have PWM output on 12 channels. So this is channel number one on receiver number one. This is channel number two on receiver number one. Here's number three. Here's number four, number five, and number six. That's on receiver number one. Now we'll go over to pin number one on receiver number two. There's number one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
Okay, so that shows that we actually have 12 channels of PWM output. Now let's take a look at the radio configuration, then we'll get into the Express LRS transmitter configuration, and then I'll show you the individual receiver configurations. For the radio configuration on channels one through four, I just use the aileron as an input. On channel five, I use the SH switch for arming, that's my arm switch. And then on channel six and seven, I also have aileron. So that's the first receiver. Now, now keep in mind on the radio for channel five, I'm sending a switch, but on the receiver, I'm actually remapping pin five to channel six and I'm remapping pin six to channel seven. I'll show you that on the receiver in just a moment. On the second receiver, it's actually straightforward. Channels eight through 13 are all aileron and keep in mind, channel five will still be sent to the receiver with the SH switch. So that second receiver will still be armed but we have a complete remap on the second receiver. We remap starting at eight and we remap every single channel down to 13. I'll show you that in the receiver configuration in just a moment. The last thing I wanna show you on the radio itself is the Express LRS configuration for the transmitter. And in this case, I'm using a packet rate of 333 Hertz and I'm using the 12 channel mixed mode. And the reason I like that 12 channel mixed mode for this use case is because in the first four channels, we send 10 bits or full resolution at the packet rate of 333 hertz. Channel number five is still sent as a one bit, so it's sent at the packet rate. And then channels six through 13 are sent at the full resolution, but a half packet rate. So think about control surfaces like ailerons and elevators that you'd want to be highly responsive. You go ahead and put those on one of the first four channels. And then for other surfaces that don't need to be as highly responsive, say a mode switch for a gyro, flaps, landing gear, stuff like that, you can send that out on channel six through 13. I do want to point out that if you're using 333 hertz as your packet rate, those last channels, six through 13, are still going to arrive on your receiver at 166 hertz, which is still ridiculously fast. So don't think just because you're putting a high channel in that it's going to be laggy or slow. It's still going to be very, very fast. This just happens to be a really cool use case for this mode on the Express LRS transmitter because 12 channels here maps up really nicely to 12 channels on the receiver. Next up, we'll take a look at the receiver configurations. This is receiver number one, and you'll note that I've got channels one, two, three, and four, no changes at all. Channel five or output pin number five, I have that remapped to channel six. I mentioned that when we covered the radio configuration. And the reason we're doing that is because we do wanna send arming information on channel five, which I do with SH, but we're remapping the pin number five to the input that we're receiving from channel six on the radio. So pin number five works off channel six on the mixer, and then pin number six works off of channel seven in the mixer. Take note of the fail safe options. You'll have to set those manually. In my case, I set all the control surfaces to their middle position and I kill the throttle using a value of 988. All right, that's receiver number one. Let's take a look at receiver number two. On receiver number two, it's a complete remap. On pin number one, we're using channel eight from the radio. On pin number two, we're using channel nine. And three, we're using 10, 11, 12, and 13, and so on. Notice that on channel five, we're still doing a remap, and we're, that means that channel five still sees the arm switch from the radio, but we're remapping everything. So that's why it doesn't look like we're skipping one here. We're just going eight through 13. And for those of you paying very close attention, you might notice there's actually 13 channels going out here. Keep in mind that pin number five is really not a full resolution channel. So they don't count that in 12 channel mode as one of your proportional channels. So it's more like 12.1. The last thing you need to do is make sure you force telemetry off on the second receiver. The bottom line is you just don't need to run telemetry on both and it causes weird issues on the transmitter if you send telemetry back from two receivers. That wraps up my video on how to get 12 channels of PWM output on two Maytek R24 P6 receivers. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy, and go fly something. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.